Hi folks, I'm Sherry Martin. Welcome to Harris Acres and Heart of the Home. The Heart of the Home really is the kitchen and today we're in our new kitchen and my guest is Brett Miller. Now Brett is from Greenville. Greer, Greer Actually, South Actually in Greer, it's part of Greenville. Okay, mm -hmm. and you are Cardin Crusaders founder? Yeah. President? CEO. If you want to put it that oh way, I guess. Oh my goodness, <laughs> you're an important young man and you're also a go-kart racing champion, aren't you? Yes, ma'am. And, and I told you this recipe is something that I made three weeks in a row to take to the go-kart track and I didn't name it anything. Mm -hmm. I just kept making it. And one day the boys came in and nine boys were standing up, lined up, and they said, Mom, we're starving to death. Have you got anything made? I said, yeah, I've got these little things made. And, and they said, well, we'll grab it and go. So that's what I named it. And that's the name of it. That's grab the name of it. That's the name of it. Now, it consists of ground chuck and onions that we've already browned, mm -hmm. sour cream, and we're using, obviously, Mayfield, Mayfield sour cream, and Hidden Belly Ranch dressing. And this is the dry dressing that you use for a party dip. Mm -hmm. And then um, cheese and canned biscuits that I'm going to tear in halves while you're making this. Can I depend on you to do oh, that? Oh, yeah. I can handle this. If you can prep a tire, I <laughs> believe you can prep this Tupperware bowl. What do you think? This will be a race-ready <laughs> grab-it-and-go snack when we get that's done. That's right. With. That's right. Now, I'm going to separate our biscuits. All right. We'll go ahead and, take and I think this is going to be an easy one. And, and you told me... You've never tasted sour cream. Never have. And if I hadn't told you sour cream was in this, you wouldn't know it. But I can tell you the sour cream makes it very pleasant. Mm. It, it's a very good um, creamy, creamy. It's a, it's a very good ingredient. And I use it quite often. Not nearly as often as I use cream cheese, I might add, because I am the cream cheese and the Cool Whip Queen. <laughs> well, as long as long we don't have anything sour. No, no, it's we'll not sour. It's not sour. It doesn't taste sour at all. It's kind of a deceiving name, mm -hmm. but it's it's just a creamy texture. And you're going to put the two ingredients in there, both containers. And these are Hungry Jack biscuits. You can use Hungry Jack, you can use the Texas, whatever brand you want. Doesn't matter, doesn't make a dime's worth of difference. The key to this is we're going to separate the biscuit and put our dip on this, and then we put the top of the biscuit on it, and it closes itself up in it. So when the guys run in the motorhome and grab these, they literally can grab a napkin and go, and, and I don't have to mess with plates or... Now, what's the, the time frame you're looking at? Uh, to do this? Yeah, because you know, I mean, we're always hectic and busy at the racetrack and... Quick uh, and easy. Maybe eight to ten minutes. Very simple. So that's perfect. Very simple. Important. Very simple. Now, how long does it take to go around the... What do you go, 15 laps? Most races are 15 to 20 laps. And mm -hmm. how, how long does that take? If it goes green to checkered, it can be done in three or four minutes. Isn't that wild? Mm -hmm. Isn't that wild? You know, last night Nick was talking about he had uh, turned it in 13.1, and I said, is that good? He said, that's really good. And I said, okay. And he said, but I want to turn it in 12.6. <laughs> Well, all those are close times, but yeah, you just want to get as fast as you can. Yeah, right now how there. fast do you turn the track? Uh, it depends on what track you're at. Uh, okay. Uh, this past weekend, as a race at Peach State, uh, a fast time would have been like a 15 night. Oh, wow. Uh, so, it, so it does depend on the mm -hmm. track. Okay. Well, I learned at um, Carnesville that um, I can't get any good pictures unless I'm over there near the flag guy because I tried, and boy, I couldn't get any good pictures. That's a tough track for a mom who's trying to run around and take pictures oh, of their yeah. child that they're so proud of. So, now how's that going? I'm thinking we're about ready. Well, we gotta add the cheese now. Add the cheese. Add the cheese. And honestly, if I had not told you, I didn't tell the kids for three weeks the ingredients, because you know, some kids don't like sour cream. And I wasn't sure they would, so I just kinda hushed and kept making them, and they kept eating them. And I said, well, now I'll tell them what the ingredients are. How's that going? What do you think? I think it's getting there. Now, the key to this is we want a one spoonful. This makes about 60. Mm -hmm. So that's a lot of food. But when you get nine boys lined up at the door of the motorhome. They're going to go quick. They're going to go quick. They're going to go quick. And I just kind of stand them up like little soldiers and make them come in there. And I hand it to them and they leave because I don't want their dirty old feet in that motorhome. Oh no, that's a that's a rule. Uh, you got to take the shoes off before you go. For it. That's right. That's right. Now we just put one spoonful. See this? Mm -hmm. How simple is that? You put one spoonful, and then you cover it with your other half of your biscuit. And then when it bakes, and you have to do it. Um, we did try it one time in just a sheet pan. That doesn't work. You need to do it in the muffin pan so it does close mm -hmm. it up. Now, you want to spoon those, fill these up. 
And well, you I'll said this made about 60, right? About 60, just a tablespoon. Yeah, there you go. There you go. How about that? And then I will cap it off for you. And it literally, see, it just closes up on itself when it bakes. How about that? Now, this is so easy, a razor can do it, right? Oh, yes. Okay. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. You can do this. And it's simple, and it's inexpensive. You know, we always buy the ground chuck on sale. Mm -hmm. So put a little tiny bit more in that one. There you go. Kind of like measuring oil. you got to get it just right, don't you? That's right. I, I don't guess we can put 14 ounces in this. No. Okay. <laughs> no, no. And I've actually seen some of our boys go out and forget to put oil in their engine. Have you ever done that? <sighs> actually, two or three times. I've actually done it twice in one day before. So. Oh, no. <laughs> that wasn't a happy day around the high tech. Seats. Oh no 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 no! Now what kind of engine do you run? Uh, we run a five horse Briggs uh, most of the time. You know and those are modified to pump out 12, 13 horsepower. But they've also come up with some new engines, some animals uh, they call them. Right. That are overhead valve engines. So, That's uh, what Nick runs, animal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which those are a lot more fun because they put out a little bit more horsepower. Yes, I've noticed he's coming off that track pretty fast. Yeah. You know that could unnerve a mother. Especially somebody new to the sport. Our older sons raced motocross. And I was pretty used to that. But, um, you know, I'm a little bit older now, and my heart's not quite as good as it used to be. Well, that's even more dangerous, I think, than, than go Motocross, but, yeah. Oh, yeah. That... Now, I'm going to close this one up. And I want you to stick this in the oven. And while it's cooking, we're going to talk a little bit more about Carding Crusaders. All okay? right. There you go. Now that'll take about six minutes to cook. And, and you don't cook it like at 400, you cook it at about 350 mm -hmm. because you want the biscuit to take time to get done while the meat's getting hot too. Okay, well that'll be kind of similar to shrinking a tire when we put it in the oven about That's right, feet, that's so. right, that's right. Now, we're almost through with this recipe and when we come back, we're gonna do something even simpler. We're just gonna talk a little bit. We're gonna talk about racing and mm -hmm. talk about what you do and go, let folks get to know you a little bit. All right. But we're gonna be back in just a second, guys. We're gonna cook the little grab it and go, and then we're gonna let you taste them. And I think you'll like them, even with sour cream. Okay? Like I said, I trust you. I, so. I'm glad you do. <laughs> Y'all hang around, we'll be right back now. Stay tuned. Hi folks, we're back. We've got grab it and go in the oven. It's smelling good. Doesn't smell like sour cream, just smells <laughs> good. And now we're gonna make a quick, quick, simple appetizer that has spinach, mozzarella cheese, bacon bits, parsley flakes, chopped onions, the little dehydrated kind, and Sherry Martin's favorite mayonnaise, blue plate. I always use blue plate. And um, these Oscar Mayer bacon bits, I always buy those rather than frying mm -hmm. it up because I am in a hurry. Right. And I have to do recipes that are quick and easy. I work two jobs and I have a racing son. So Something you know famous. you know what my lifestyle oh, yeah. is. Okay, Brady, if you'll put all those ingredients together, I'm gonna chop you some spinach. This could be the old folks version of grab it and go because I think it's gonna be better for us. It's got spinach in it. It's got mozzarella, low fat skim cheese. So that's gonna be good. Or perfect for those trying to stay in a stock light. That's right, that's right. Now what's the weight class? Cause Nick is in, I think Nick's in stock medium. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what is the well, weight, how does that work? Well, there's a stock light, a stock medium, a stock heavy, a super heavy and uh, like the stock light driver. Would I be a super heavy? <laughs> <laughs> Well, they, they... I don't think a go-kart could get me. <laughs> <laughs> well, they, they, see, they, the different weight classes they have is most of the time a person, uh, like my size, is perfect for stock medium. Okay. Uh, about 165 pounds or so. That's about what Nick is, yeah. So, But I'm capable of running light, medium, and heavy. So, okay, because uh, they add weights to your mm -hmm, go-kart. Yeah. And the more kinda weight like, that you can put on the cart, the better. Kind of so. like I had butter. <laughs> <laughs> kinda like, and you know, this recipe doesn't have any butter. I don't know if I can do this or not. But it's got enough blue plate in it. I can do that. That'll make up. I can do that. Now, how about that? That looks pretty good. Just throw that over in the sink. There you go. <clears throat> now, you stir that up. And then I'm going to add my my spinach to it, but you're gonna have to do something with the garlic salt. What are you gonna do with it? I'm gonna put a big old huge spoonful in it. How about a medium spoonful? I guess that'll work. Okay, because if you had a wreck and we had to give you mouth to mouth resuscitation on the track, we wouldn't want you to smell too garlic. <laughs> <No. laughs> now you're gonna use my little measuring spoons and you know they've never been used much. So Let's there you go. Break them in, yeah. There you go. Cool, there you are. Now was that so simple? 
so simple. And I'm going to get the little crust ready for this, and I'm going to hand you some spinach to stir it into your ingredients. And this is going to be light and simple, and the kind of thing that, you know, I keep a bag of spinach in the refrigerator, and I keep mozzarella cheese, and I always keep crescent rolls, because they are, they're like the answer to everything. You can do breakfast, lunch, or dinner if you've got crescent rolls. Does your mom do anything with them? Does she make little pizzas or anything with now, them? Sometimes she'll make something like that or just some kind of little breakfast pizza with right, it sometimes. Right, right. You know, that's another recipe we could do. We haven't done a breakfast pizza. That's a good idea. Have you got any recipes you can bring to me when you come back? I've got one. Good. What yeah. is it? it it's, we, call, we call it the mix. Okay. And it's just uh, almost like something like a Chex Mix. You mix okay. all kind of... Candy, raisins, uh, actually check mix goes in it, and mm -hmm. uh, just something simple, kind of like we've been doing, you can grab it right before you go to qualify. Right, so. right. Now, do you like craisins? You know, they're raisins out of cranberries. Never had that. No. Honey, honey, you're going to have to come spend a week with me because, <laughs> let me tell you, I can, I can create some recipes with craisins. They are awesome. They are awesome. Well, somebody just got to convince me to try new stuff. That's, that's right. That's, that's the right. thing. And I'm kind of, my children will tell you, I'm a convincing woman. <laughs> and their daddy would say, honey, if you want to be happy, we're going to do it mama's way. I love that man. He was so smart. He was so smart. He knew that if we wanted to be happy, we were going to do it mama's way. Do it mama's way. And I just thought that was a smart man. He was a good man, too. I wish you could have known him because he was a sweetheart. He How are we looking here? That's looking pretty good. Stir it up a little bit more. There you go. There you go. That's looking good. Mm -hmm. Cheesy and spinachy. Cheesy. You said that you like spinach dip. And let's see. <clears throat> that looks pretty good. And what we're going to do is we're going to basically, we've got it in my little heart-shaped pan. And we're just going to close this up over it and twist it at the top. Now, and this is not go. too hard, is it? No, just... honey. This is so simple. You know me. I'm all about simple. Now, is this so simple? And this will make enough for about 100 people. You know, my mama Lucy taught me something. If you're going to cater, you want to make it simple. You want to make it good, but you want to make it simple. So, now we're going to assemble these, and when they come out of the oven, it'll be about time for the grab it and go. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to have a simple, simple, light gelatin dessert. And how many people did you say could? Oh, shoot, honey, this will feed. At least 65, 75, maybe 90 if you do Cause, small Because that works amounts. out perfect. A lot of times on a Friday night before a race or something, all the all the guys and team will get together oh, yeah. and we'll just have a, a big cookout kind right, of thing. So right. that would be perfect for And that. this is the kind of thing that is simple enough and, and really the ingredients that you have in your fridge at home. So it's not a big deal. And, and my tag says big to do. I don't want things to be a big mm -hmm. to do. I want things to be simple and I want it to be fun. I want it to be fun, and, and this is part of it. I think that's why I like cooking. You can make it fun, and you can make it simple. So these are getting pretty close. Now, what do you think about that? I think it's going to be cheesy. I think it's going to be spinachy. I think you're going to like it. And if you don't, you're a polite southern young boy, <laughs> and you're going to say, oh, Miss Sherry, I love that. I just love that, right? <laughs> well, yes, no, I, I would be that way. I'm sure you I would, because your mama taught you well. That's right. <laughs> That's right. And gets on me if I don't. That's so. right. That's right. That's right. You're a good boy. You said the other day you went and got your grandmother and brought her down to spend some time with you. Oh, yeah. Does she spend a lot of time with you? She does. Um, actually, she uh, provided a way for me to race for a long time when That's I was a great. kid. That's great. That is uh, great. She, uh, she'll she come up and stay with us for a week every once in a while, get up and uh -huh. cook breakfast for me every morning. So, oh, uh, awesome. And every time she comes to the racetrack, there's always a lot of food. Oh, so. yeah. Yeah, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Now, we're going to finish putting these together, and we're going to get them in the oven. And when we come back from this next break, we're going to have a light gelatin salad, and we're going to have our grab-it-and-go, and we're going to have our little pizza hors d'oeuvres. And this is going to be a light snack mm -hmm. that could really turn into a meal. And it's the kind of thing that you can share with your mom or your dad or your racing friends. So y'all hang around. When we come back, Brett is going to sample sour cream. He's <laughs> going to sample our spinach hors d'oeuvres. And I think you're going to like both of them. Hang around, guys. We'll be right back. Folks, we're back. And through the magic of television, we have a light, light gelatin salad. And we have the old folks hors d'oeuvre for me, <laughs> folks like me. And then we've got the grab it and go for the younger kids. And this has food groups in it, um, calcium and spinach, good for you, a little bacon, a little fat. And then this has got the ground chuck and cheese and sour cream. 
And I can't wait to see what you think of that. Now, my Nick likes brown mustard on it. So I can go ahead and figure this is going to be the perfect snack right before we go out on the track. I hope so. I hope so. And it, it is simple, and it adds the food groups that you need mm -hmm. when you're out there. And, and it's something that I have a large Tupperware container, and I make about 60 of these, take them to the track, and then when the boys are ready to eat, I hit them in the microwave, mm -hmm. and they're ready to go. Perfect. So, and it's something that when you get home, you can share with your mom. So, and I know that family is a lot of part of your racing. Oh, yes. Absolutely, yep. and I'm, I'm so glad of that. Now, when we go to the track, we want to make it simple, and we want to make it easy, because I want to be out there as much as I can. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were talking about it earlier, it's been hot this summer. Very it's been hot. really hot and dangerous. So, and a lot of days, Nick won't need a bite until the race is over. Yeah, and that's and the way it usually is. And it's, that's tough. You've got to have something fast. Yeah, but, but it's also tough on your body mm -hmm. to be out there that long. I don't know how the NASCAR guys do it. You know, now, do you have goals of being in NASCAR? Uh, I used to, but I'll be honest with you, I, the family sport as, as it is now, that's what's keeping me in it. That's so. good. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. And, and you don't leave home. You, you stay mm -hmm. with your family. Right. So, so that's a good thing. He and I, I'm always at the track when he races. I'm afraid not to be in mm -hmm. case he needs me. So, um, and sometimes it's a little hard because it's late at night, but... But it's a great family sport. It is, it sure and, uh, is. and I have learned a lot. I now understand that he races gold. What does he race? He races gold. Gold. Not stock medium. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm just learning. See, kind of like you with cooking. I'm just That's learning. Right. I'm completely <laughs> lost. So. I, I know <laughs> when they come over the PA system and I'll look at somebody and say, is that Nick's race? And they're like, yes, he races gold. Okay, okay, okay. So I'm learning. But you've learned. You've learned mm -hmm. three simple recipes. This one I'm going to give you. And my grandmother, God love her soul, loved to make jello. I hated jello. I wouldn't eat jello. And that was one of the things she made every week. But I think I'm gonna like this because it has ingredients I have in it. I like pecans, I like coconut, or I don't not coconut, it has um, pineapple in it. Mm -hmm. it. Has pineapple cherries, pecans, and secret ingredient I'm not gonna tell you about. Perfect fruit snack for a hot fruit day. Fruit snack, right? that's right, that's right. Perfect fruit snack. Now let's fix some plates and then I think the guys are gonna come in and we're going to give them a little bit of snack. And this is going to be easy. Here, let's give them yeah, some jello. There you go. Let me get you a spoon and a fork. Miss Courtney, you ready to eat, Nanny? Yes, ma'am. I think you'll like this jello dessert. I think you'll like it. And it is light. And it's the kind of thing on a hot racing day that'll be good for you. And I'm interested to see, you haven't had Grab It and Go yet. Nick's probably had about 60 of them. But you haven't, so let's see what you think of that. New experience. New experience. You want to fix another one? You're going to have to eat. Now, are we going to let you take a bite of Grab It and Go on camera? <laughs> I'll say let's go ahead. I don't have okay. any doubts about it, to be honest All right, with you. let's go ahead. Let's see what you think. <laughs> Since you don't like sour cream. <laughs> Can you taste the sour cream? To be honest with you, I don't taste the sour cream. No, you don't. You really don't. That really tastes good. It, it is good, and, it, and it's... It's quick and it's easy, which is good for your mom. Mm -hmm. So, and this recipe I really like because I like the fresh spinach. And, and you were talking about spinach dip. Every time I go out to a restaurant that has a spinach dip, I order it. And that's kind of where I got this mm -hmm. idea, was to kind of make a hot spinach dip and close it up in its own little crust. And then you could have it track. And now, isn't that sweet? We use little <laughs> heart pans. How creative am I? <laughs> no, 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 that's perfect for the guys that bring the girlfriends. That's to the right. Race that's right. That's right. <laughs> Say, honey, you can have a part of my heart. <laughs> how sweet is that, or how silly is that? <laughs> One of the two. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, when you go to the track, you have a lot of friends who travel with you. I do. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a good thing. It's good to have that support system. That's right. So, my oldest daughter goes and takes pictures of Nick, and, and it's funny because I'll take some and none of mine ever turn out because mm -hmm. I don't realize how fast y'all are going around the track and my shutter isn't quite as fast as y'all are. So I always have this blank picture of dirt, you know, and he's like, Mom, that is not me on the track. That's just <laughs> dirt. <laughs> so this has been so much fun. I hope you've come away with something you learned, and I've learned that today, in today's world, Kids don't have to be into bad things, mm -hmm. and kids don't have to do all the things that their friends do. They can be good, clean kids. That's right. And it's been a pleasure having you here. I've so enjoyed this. You promise me you're going to come back? Oh, yeah, Miss Sherry. I'll be back for sure. Okay. Okay. <laughs> all right. And I'll try to make something without sour cream, although you're doing pretty well with that. Come back to see us soon. Bye-bye. Hi, folks. I'm so glad you stopped by Harris Acres. I want you to share a part of my life that's really special to me, some gospel music. Sit back, relax, and listen to one of my favorite groups. I think you're going to like them.
Hang around now. The greatest of them all to me is how the world was born and why the roses have to live. Each day among the thorns, one day among a world of thorns, a rose began to grow. It was the greatest gift of God this world will ever know. It was the will of God to show that since the world was born, there had to be a rose to live and die among the Two thousand years have come and gone since God looked down in love. Amen. There in the town of Bethlehem a rose began to bud. It lived to bloom until one day was crushed with awful frown. And then in love from God above was moved to higher ground. One day among a world of thorns a rose began to grow. It was the greatest gift of God this world will ever know. It was the will of God to show that since the world was born, there had to be a rose to live and die among the thorns. One day among a world of thorns, a rose began to grow. And it was the greatest gift of God this world will ever know. It was the will of God to show that since the world was born, there had to be a rose to live and die among the thorns. Years have come and gone since God looked down in love. There in the town of Bethlehem a rose began to bud. It lived to bloom until one day was crushed with awful frown. And then in love from God above was moved to higher ground. One day among a world of thorns a rose began to grow. It was the greatest gift of God this world will ever know. It was the will of God to show that since the world was born, there had to be a rose to live and die among the thorns. One day among a world of thorns, a rose began to grow. It was the greatest gift of God this world will ever know. It was the will of God to show that since the world was born, there had to be a rose to live.